Hey everyone, it's Matt here. Welcome back to another episode of Savant Tech Talk. Lately, there's been a lot of talk about Web3. And Web3 is often regarded as the decentralized internet of tomorrow, powered by blockchain technology and cryptocurrency. Some technologists, investors, and entrepreneurs believe that this new tech buzzword has the ability to bring digital ownership over content and art, also triggering an end to big tech companies like Meta, Amazon, Google, and Microsoft. And on the other hand, some believe that this new paradigm is flawed and can even hinder the openness of the internet. The true potential of this technology likely lies somewhere in the middle. In today's video, we'll dive deeper into this next generation of the internet, its correlation with cryptocurrency and blockchain technologies, and the controversies surrounding it. As always, if you find this topic interesting, then you can let us know by hitting that like button and subscribing to this channel for more videos. You can also let us know if you find it interesting by saying so in the comment section down below. Now let's jump into it. So what is Web3? Web3 is the third iteration of the internet, and it refers to a blockchain-based decentralized online ecosystem. Instead of being owned by central developers, the platforms and applications built on Web3 will be owned by users who will receive their equity by helping to develop and maintain these services. Apps that run on Web3 are often referred to as dApps or decentralized apps. Cryptocurrency plays a big role in Web3. It provides a financial incentive for anyone who participates in Web3 projects. A major example of this is Gitcoin, which allows developers to get paid in cryptocurrency for working on open source projects. The internet has changed fundamentally and drastically in the past few years. With the advent of Web3, we could be on the verge of a major breakthrough. Web1 was the first iteration of the internet and it allowed users to only read content on the web. Web 2.0 was the more interactive and collaborative iteration of the internet, allowing users to share information and read and write content online. Now Web3 guarantees to provide an untapped read-write web, one that doesn't need the intervention of central authorities. So to put it simply, it's a more distributed, permissionless, and decentralized internet. Web 2.0 dominates the internet that we know of today. Although the World Wide Web has matured a lot since its development three decades ago, it's also experienced numerous challenges. Web 2.0 is centralized, which implies that it's built on centralized infrastructure and managed by intermediaries. Web3 offers higher security and privacy, facilitates data ownership and digital identity solutions, promotes greater transparency, and isn't controlled by central authorities. And if you're wondering what makes all these things possible, well, this is where blockchain technology comes into the picture. So you might be wondering what's keeping Web3 from becoming widespread. Well, first of all, building applications and services on Web3 isn't a simple task especially in times when technology is still relatively complex and very time consuming. But a lot of companies and businesses are giving access to fully managed, scalable Web3 backend infrastructure, and thereby allowing you to develop Web3 apps at your disposal. Now let's have a look at the controversy surrounding Web3 technology. While Web3 has a lot of potential and promise to transform several facets of our everyday lives, it's also experienced a lot of criticism. Considering it's still in its early stages, it's not yet become a concrete standard. So to put it simply, the technology is still undergoing modifications and is open to interpretation, similar to the underlying blockchain and cryptocurrency technologies that drive it. Web3's constantly changing nature implies that it's not yet standardized and your experience could differ between platforms. While one application could be entirely decentralized owing to Web3, the other could be centralized, powered by Web2 technology. And even though Web3 promises complete decentralization of its apps and services, some centralization is likely. And it's not too difficult to see the reason. The Ethereum blockchain powers a chain of Web3 apps to the range of gigabytes. Developers working on it either have to extract information from third-party services or scour the entire blockchain. Most developers simply gather data from third-party resources due to its ease of availability and convenience. Now, doing this simply means that you're disregarding Web3's grounding principles of decentralization and self-governance, 
and tending to a third party resource. Even today, a lot of decentralized applications and services rely a little bit on centralization. Moxie Marlinspike, the co-founder of Signal, mentioned in a recent blog post that once a distributed ecosystem centralizes around a platform for convenience, it becomes the worst of both worlds. Centralized control, but still distributed enough to become mired in time. But despite these claims, Web3 is likely to advance and mature in the long term. Another major problem with Web3 applications and services is their high fees. To put it simply, all blockchain networks, Ethereum included, competitively raise fees because of the network congestion due to high supply and demand. This means that during a period of network congestion, all the transactions occurring on the blockchain network become extremely costly. But in recent times, blockchain projects are working towards improving this scenario. And some of them are even shifting towards more scalable systems like proof of stake. The future is unpredictable and a lot can happen even in the coming months. Although Web3 experiences a lot of the same hindrances as other crypto and NFT projects, it's definitely going to bring a lot of improvements in privacy, security, censorship, and anonymity. Web3 is not only driving the metaverse and the expansion of blockchain in general, but it also has a major impact on other tech backgrounds, including virtual reality and augmented reality services, messaging and storage, banking and insurance, and NFTs and video gaming. Web3 would change the way that data is being used, stored, and managed. Regardless, with so much talent and investment in the sector, decentralization could one day become commonplace and mainstream. So there we have it, a look at understanding Web3 in detail. Once again, if you found this video interesting or helpful, don't forget to let us know by hitting that like button and subscribing to this channel for more videos. Thank you for watching.